a very good morning to everyone and salam bersih from Malaysia. Now it's indeed a pleasure for me to be here to witness the property show, Malaysia Property Show 2014, showcasing projects by renowned Malaysian property developers here in Singapore. And of course, uh, Penang has also a pavilion for the first time ever. And for that reason, I was invited by Reda to probably share uh, with you why perhaps it may be not such a bad idea to invest in Penang. <laughs> uh, I do not think I need to uh, uh, wax lyrical or to expand on the attractions and the appeal that uh, Penang has. Uh, I'm sure that everyone here knows about Penang and everyone here has been in Penang. Am I correct? Yes. Has everyone here been in Penang? Yes. Can anyone who has not been in Penang put up their hands? <laughs> anyone? It doesn't matter. Okay, so I think you can probably do a better job explaining how pretty the island is. But in case you have any doubts, perhaps I'd like to introduce two movies that was shot in Penang. One was, of course, uh, A Journey, Il Uni. I don't know if you've seen that movie. Il Uni, A Journey, that was uh, done with a, a foreign company. And it, it has uh, very beautiful scenes of Penang. And of course, another Hong Kong uh, drama series, Tan Nian Suan Chen, Outban Love. And really, you can see, you really uh, amazed at how pretty uh, Penang is. But what I want to discuss today it's not how pretty the island is. I think everyone knows that. How good the food is. I think your stomach can attach to the char kway teows and the durians and asam laksa. Or how culturally vibrant the heritage city and clay is. But I think being in a property uh, showcase, probably I'd like to focus on one key aspect of property investment. That will be the concept of value creation. Now, when you talk about investing in property, the experts can tell you what to look for. But has the chief minister of Penang, and what I want to see for every investor in Penang is that you get your money's worth. And more important, that it is sustainable. We do not want to buy a property, a property that for that moment looks very attractive but it ends up like a ghost town. I think that is something that nobody wants. But in Penang, I think we can rest assured that it will not be a ghost town. Because uh, many of the projects that we launched and sold uh, either they leave it there because they intend to come back and stay later or it's been taken up. Now, why is it that I'm confident in saying that there is value creation when you invest in Penang? Now, principally because the Penang State Government has a forward plan on where we want to be 10 years from now. Now, what is this forward plan? Number one, we must identify what our strengths and weaknesses. In many respects, Penang is like Singapore. Uh, we have no natural resources. We have only our human talent. And whether we like it or not, we will live and die by our wits and our wits alone. So the focus of the Penang State Government has always been to develop our human talent, to build our human talent to retain our human talent. Because only when you do that, that can industry grow. And at the same time, of course, there will be people living in all those property units that the developers are building. Now, are we on the right path? Last six years, we have stressed on good governance. We have stressed on zero tolerance of corruption. We are stressed on making Penang more livable, cleaner, greener, safer, and healthier. 
We have both stressed on education. And finally, we have stressed on making Penang different. Different from perhaps other places that you have visited. Different in the sense that when you go into Penang, you can breathe the air of freedom. When you talk about freedom, it is real freedom. You know, in Penang, uh, I talk, I'm not talking about political freedom yet. <laughs> so, this is a voice show kid, or else I embarrass my post. Eh. <laughs> you want to hear me talk about political freedom? That's another venue. <laughs> But we are talking about freedom in the sense of allowing uh, our people the choice to express the choice. The choice to express themselves. The choice to realize their potential. The choice to be themselves. And this is what we offer in Penang. For example, uh, we have uh, stressed on making Penang the art and cultural capital of Malaysia. First, we feel that if you want to be an international city, if we want to be an intelligent city, you must have a vibrant and dynamic art and cultural scene in Penang. And we have tried. Uh, I think we have some successes. Our Georgetown Heritage Festival is one of the premier uh, art events in the region and I say that because we have a lot of Singapore performers even your Kumar also came to Penang <laughs> they tell me if your Kumar comes to Penang that means it is worth coming to <laughs> you all know who is Kumar yeah. I think before I saw him I never knew there was such a stand-up comedian like Kumar and I must say that he is really good so if you say that Singapore are straight lace, I say you look at Kuma, you know they are not straight lace. <laughs> but I think he can only perform because his jokes probably are too risky. If you look at the art scene, a wall painting, you can probably only find that in Penang. Certain places. You do all paintings, they will not invite wash it, they threaten to punish you and fine you 2,000 ringgit. <laughs> in Penang, if you do a good wall painting, you hear that, huh? listen it, read my lips, what I'm saying now. If you do a good wall painting, we won't whitewash it, we won't punish you, we will probably give you 2,000 ringgit. <laughs> And when we talk about freedom, yes, it's usefulness. You know, another very important aspect of freedom is freedom from government interference. We practice what we preach. One of the reasons for the success of the Georgetown Heritage Festival is because we do not interfere. We let the artists express themselves freely and fully. And that's why it's so successful. Another aspect that we have found that this works was our Penang Science Council. We set up a Penang Science Council four years ago to rekindle interest in science and technology. Among students, we find that many of the students do not want to take the hard courses of science and tech. Too difficult to pass. They take all the glamorous courses in accounting, law, not say law very easy. Lah. Not say accounting very easy, you know, I'm an accountant. So not a very successful one. That's why I became the chief minister. <laughs> but it worked. Now, why did the Penang Science Council work? Because again, we realized we have no expertise. We decided to let the experts do the work. We asked the industry, and you know, Penang has some of the top industries in the world. Intel, Motorola, Altera, you, know, you name it, we have it. We asked them to come in and run this initiative on science and technology, especially for young kids. And they've done the science fair the third year this year, end of the year, there are even Singaporean schools who are coming to participate. So 
So if you happen to be around town, Penang town at the end of the year, do drop by in Penang. It is really world class. It's so successful that we, we do it in a sports stadium. The only state in Malaysia where we do science fairs in a sports stadium. Last year, we had 30,000. This year, we're aiming for 50,000 people. And why is it world class? It is run by Intel, run by Motorola, run by V Brown, run by Agilent, run by Honeywell. All top companies, most important of all, not run by government. <laughs>